Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy mercy endureth forever. forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, unto whom all hearts hearts are open, all all desires desires known, and and from from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, which we bring perfectly love thee, and and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Kiri eleison. Kiri eleison. Here. Now this morning, for this Sunday only, for reasons that will immediately become obvious, we will skip the Decalogue and go immediately to the collect. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Look with compassion upon the heartfelt desires of your servants and purify our disordered affections that we may behold your eternal glory in the face of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from the 20th chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning at the first verse. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work Neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us 
or we shall die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you, so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. The psalm for today is the 7th through the 14th verses of Psalm number 19. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his heirs? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The New Testament reading for today is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, beginning at the 12th verse of the 7th chapter. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil do not do what is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of that in which dwells my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I must I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their temple. And he told those who sold the pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews then said, It has taken forty-six years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised up from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. From John 2, verse 16. And he told those who sold the pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. At the beginning of his early Judean ministry, and one author sets a date of about 28 A.D., Jesus went up to Jerusalem for the Passover. In the Gospel of John, I believe he will actually make three trips for three Passovers. This is the first. And when he arrived there, he found the temple filled with people, some of whom were selling oxen, sheep, and doves. oxen, sheep, and doves to be presented for sacrifice in the temple. Those who had traveled far and could not bring their sacrificial animals with them were forced to buy those animals at an exorbitant price. The other catch was that Roman money, which was used on the street, could not be accepted for spending in the temple. In order to make their purchases, these same buyers had to exchange their money with the money changers, who made a sizable profit changing Roman money into temple money. Is it any wonder that Jesus was angry? So he took a, whip, a cord of whips, a whip of cords, and drove all the people out of the temple, along with the oxen and the sheep and the doves, 
and he overturned the tables of the money changers. In John 2, 16, and he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away, do not make my father's house a house of trade. This was Jesus' first cleansing of the temple, his first act of national importance. By it, he declared his right to look after the affairs of the temple and announced his mission as the Messiah. The second cleansing would occur three years later at the end of his public ministry, at the Passover, at the Passover just after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday at the beginning of the last week of his life. The Jews who did not follow him asked, what sign do you show us since you do these things? It seemed that they doubted his authority to perform such an action. In other words, they believed that only the Messiah could do something like this. This explains why the Jews responded by asking him for a sign. They wanted proof that Jesus had the messianic authority to remove the merchants from the temple. And Jesus answered and said to them, <clears throat> Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And then the Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? Let's understand that when he said he would raise up the temple in three days, he was clearly talking figuratively. By these words, he for the first time was speaking of what would happen to him at the end of his ministry. He was referring to the temple of his body and specifically to his own resurrection. It's obvious that Jesus' Jewish opposition did not understand what he meant. As we are told in John 2, 22, even his disciples did not understand what our Lord was saying at first. In fact, they did not realize what Jesus meant until after his resurrection. The Jews were sure that Jesus were ta was talking about the actual temple in Jerusalem. Did you know that the temple was not even finished when Jesus was crucified. After 46 years, it was still incomplete, and that work would continue until 63 AD, about 30 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. Because the Jews did not accept his words as he meant them, they rejected his divine mission as well as the fact that he was the Son of God who had come to earth to save mankind. Later, at his trial, they twisted and used this same passage out of context to mean that Jesus wanted to literally destroy the temple. <clears throat> Excuse me. The parallel between the actual temple and Christ's body is undeniable. The temple in Jerusalem was being built to be the dwelling place of God on earth. Just as Jesus had come to be God on earth. This in response to God's command in Exodus 25 verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell in their midst. The divine glory of God appeared in the person of Jesus Christ and was later revealed in his church. <clears throat> 
Christ did not immediately give them a sign. He gave them an enigmatic response that they would destroy this temple and in three days he would raise it up. Under the old covenant, only the high priest could come into God's presence behind the veil of the temple. During the Jewish Feast of Atonement, for example, the high priest entered beyond the veil to make an offering for the people. The high priest was the only one who could do that. We might think that the high priest would be thrilled on the day that he could enter into God's presence. But no, chances are he would be afraid, afraid of making a mistake. The Jewish law demanded that the high priest go through <coughs> exacting rituals. <coughs> The fate of Israel for the coming year depended on his performance. One error could mean disaster, not only for him, but for the whole nation. In Luke's account of the crucifixion, chapter 23, verse 45, he writes that Jesus suffered, quote, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Immediately after, Jesus breathed his last. And for a few days at least, both the literal and the figurative temple had been destroyed. Fortunately, Jesus our high priest, the highest priest of all, had accomplished his mission, and God accepted his sacrifice. With the destruction of the temple veil, the presence of God is available forever. The presence of God is available to everyone, to all of us. And it is a place of love and mercy. Jesus was truly responsible for destroying the temple and raising it up in three days. Please pray with me. Thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who through his death and through his resurrection opened to us the ability to approach him and to approach you without any hindrance. And in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, eternally begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of every God, begotten not made, being of what substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, 
and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with, great, with the spirit of unity, truth, and concord and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We beseech thee also so to lead the nations of the world into the way of righteousness and so to direct and dispose the hearts of all our leaders, especially Joseph, our president, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant uh, that our leaders may truly and impartially administer justice, upholding integrity and truth to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant Foley, our Archbishop, Alberto, our Bishop, Tom, our priest, and Deacon Tom, that they may both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and strengthen us at St. Mary's to fulfill the great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them, and teaching them to obey all that thou hast commanded. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity especially those on our parish prayer list. For those fighting cancer, Jody, David, Alan, Sherry, Penny, Doug, Debbie, 
and Archbishop Ben Kwame. For those in need of uplifting prayer, Father Larson, Betty, Luke, Bonnie, Jerry, Donna, Jonas, Alan, Kathy, Carl, Michael, Jim, Rachel, Francesca, Josh, Carolyn, and Gary. For those in long-term care, especially Gabriel, Grace, Nancy, Carol, and all the residents at Hollybrook and South Park. For the church's ministry in Nepal, especially for De Hen Mahendra, Dipendra, Reshma, Tirtha, Purna, their families and churches, and the transformational spiritual church. For our sister diocese in Myanmar, for the growth of St. Mary's Anglican Mission. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants who have departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Ella, that thy will for them may be fulfilled. And we beseech thee to give us grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all thy saints, that with them we may be participants of thy holy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. These are prayers, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty Amen. God. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, for provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, and the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that, that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Jesus Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, O ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, 
This is a true saying worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and with, with thy spirit. spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. All things come of thee, O Lord, and, and of thy own no, have we given thee. thee. The Lord be with you. And, and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up unto the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It, it is meet and right so, so to do. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, 
Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father. For that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it instituted in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and of thine almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Ghost these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to our, thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. on the night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is the blood of my new covenant, of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins, and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy, 
through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice. Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> and now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not from temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, is offered up for us. For let's keep the feast. We do not presume to come to this side table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the, the same Lord, Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood. And that and we may evermore dwell in him, him and, and he in us. us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> o Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant, grant us thy, thy peace. peace. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Lord be with you. And, and with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, ever -living God, God we, we most heartily thank thee for the thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us. And that we are very members of the mystic body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thine everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to await the Paschal mystery. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.